Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show. We're on PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel. I'm Peter Martin. Alan Ruff, Charlie Adam and Tam McManus are here with me and delighted that you could join us. Thank you so much to so many thousands and thousands of people now downloading the app and joining us on YouTube and subscribing to our YouTube channel as well. Absolutely brilliant. Now that we are exclusively Monday to Friday from four o'clock, we've got uh, listeners and viewers near and far uh, and thousands of people. Thank you very much for the messages about the podcast cast too. Um, it's all about hard work, Ruffy, and uh, this morning, obviously, you and I put in a bit of graft, but some people just think hard work is getting up at eight o'clock in the morning, which must be a real grind, eh? Yeah. Which means I've got to work two jobs. Yeah. I do. It's no probably goes to, goes, goes to bed about ten or something. <laughs> It's incredible, by the way. Incredible when you say I nearly fell off the chair, Ruffy. Unbelievable. Great to have you with us as well, Charlie. Um, we've missed you the last uh, week, but there's lots to get our teeth into. Uh, I'm going to start with saying happy birthday to George Cunningham, 84, Ruffy. Watches the show regularly every day. Uh, George's a big Rangers fan, uh, loves the show, uh, and it's it's good that we've got people celebrating their birthday. 84, you're worried. You've got a few years. Yeah, no, inspirational, George. To get to 84 is absolutely fantastic. I'm I'm sure he looks after himself and does all the proper things. Yeah, absolutely. I don't know George's lifestyle, but if you say so, Ruffy, <laughs> happy <laughs> birthday to you. Uh, thanks to Steve Lang, who commented on uh, some of the topics we've been talking about over the last couple of days on Celtic fans' conduct. It was a long email that Steve sent us, but very much appreciated as well. Uh, Charlie Anderson says, I, I love the show. I watch it every day from Preston. Um, and he says, I'd love you to do you He loves the one-to-one, -one, Ruffy. He says, I'd love to do a one-to-one -one with uh, Derek Johnson um, because we worked with him and DJ would, what a tale he's got to tell of his great career. Yeah, fantastic. You know, a great sense of humour as well, you know, and... Uh, do you think he's funnier than you? <coughs> no. no. <laughs> I, I can, I, I, I'm unbiased. I've heard both of them speak. <coughs> yeah, okay. He's definitely funnier than you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you've, been on a, you've been on a good run, eh? You were hanging about with Sunnis and that. that yeah, we're yeah. at the Deborah Foundation. It's always good to help a charity. Uh, you know, and, was, uh, <laughs> and uh, they raised yeah. the Alan Ruff Foundation. Hundred thousand yeah. pounds they raised. That was good going, actually. What charity I is. think it's actually Graham's an ambassador, isn't he? Yes, he certainly is. Yeah. And uh, all the top stars were there. Uh, oh, Gordon Smith was there. <laughs> he popped in. Uh, yeah. Ian McLeod was there. Yeah. Who else? Uh, Marco was there. Obviously, Joe Jordan was there. Yeah. Yeah, it was a great night. Great night. And some of the kids were there as well. Yeah, Joe Jordan, wonderful player, fantastic. Yeah. Started at Morton, moved to Leeds, then Man United, yeah. Verona, unbelievable. Yeah. AC Milan. Yeah, there was a couple. Of, when Chick did the introduction, there was some fantastic stats with Joe. That I, yeah. a lot of stuff that I, I didn't know, and I obviously can't remember them because I would have told you. Yeah, uh, scored in all three World like, Cups. Uh, for and, and even Graham Zunis's introduction was unbelievable. The Hall of Fame that he's in, yeah, you know, uh, is incredible as well. It was just, but he was, it was a, a top, great night. He was a top draw player, um, and I heard you were in really good form. That's why I just thought I'd mention it. You've you've had a really good, solid month. Where lots of people have been very complimentary to you on the show and on the after dinner circuit. Ah, it's always nice to be nice, isn't it? <laughs> 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 Should we discuss what we're discussing in the car on here? <laughs> What's your next project is? <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to be nice, says Ruffy. <laughs> Magic. Anyway, apart from anything else, lots to look forward to, including, of course, a massive game for Rangers. 3 nothing up from the first leg. Uh, absolutely superb. I think favourites, not red-hot favourites, because um, it's going to be a red-hot atmosphere, I, I think, for, for Rangers going uh, over to Belgrade. Yeah, I was... Um I was involved in the, the last time they were over there in that Champions League qualifier and the atmosphere was electric. I can remember flares hour and a half, two hours before kickoff. Fans were in early, so they'll expect it. But you know, it's um, you know these this group of players have, have travelled you know in Europe a lot the last few seasons, so they'll be used to you know big crowds, especially at Ibrox. They've had that, so no, I wouldn't be surprised if Rangers went there and got a good result again. Um, I don't think they you know they will um, lose the match. I think you know. Red Star will score, but I think Rangers will still win the game just because I think that they have to open up and Rangers will, will counter-attack them really well. Yeah, you think they'll win the game on the night as well? Yeah, I think 2-1, I think Rangers will win. I just think this team are, are liable at the back. Yeah, they've got good players going forward. Yeah. But as soon as they open up, Rangers will be able to counter-attack them with Kent and Aribo and people like that. So, no, it's a, it'll be a big one and, um, you know, it'll be a huge... Um, 
huge for Rangers if they can get into, into the quarterfinals. Yeah, well, all the talk is about the atmosphere that Rangers are going to face. Here's what Giovanni van Bronckhorst is, uh, is making of this particular tie. Well, we, we, we know we're going to go to a place where the, um, the, the atmosphere can be very, very hostile. And, uh, but, you know, that's, that's uh, you know, a thing we have, to, we have to cope with. I mean, we have a, quite an experienced team, so uh, we've been in, 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 uh, in, in places before where it's very hostile. And, uh, but you have, to, uh, you have to deal with it, make sure you mentally you are prepared. Uh, you know, the more I look at this game, uh, Tam, I actually share Charlie's view on it. Although there's four players walking the suspension tightrope, I don't think that really matters. I think players with the experience just have to give their all. Um, you live with the atmosphere, they've they've come up against that before. I've got a wee sneaky feeling they might sneak this as well. Yeah, I think they can win the game. I, 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 there's no doubt about that. I think that they'll come out and open up and Rangers you know, are capable of going and scoring. And... The most important thing I think for Rangers is not conceding an early goal. No, don't mm -hmm. don't concede a goal in the first 10, 15 minutes, and that gives him a massive lift. I think if Rangers can score in the first 20 minutes, the tie is totally dead, and they can go and win the game. Yeah, yeah I think they would knock the stuff in it with Red Star Belgrade. But if they get an early goal, then it could it could spook Rangers a little bit. So keep the first 20 minutes tight. Try and try and quiet the crowd down and try and get that try and get that goal. Don't sit back. You know, Giovanni Van Bronckhorst has took a bit of stick. I think for being a bit defensive. I think this team is built to go and attack this Rangers team, so I would go and attack them and then try and get that goal. Yeah, I mean the atmosphere. I, I the game that you that you played in, I was there commentating on it, and I have to tell you, Ruffy, um, the ultras. Nobody can go into the ultras section and <clears> pick a seat within that certain area, and if they do, I think they get what for. Um, and the police don't decide when they leave. The ultras decide when they leave. I mean, that's how mental it is over there. Um, I, I, I don't know if it's changed, it, you know, in, in the decades gone since Charlie strutted his stuff there. No, I don't think it has changed. I think if you see the photographs, it's still the same. You know, the flares are there, the colours, the red and everything. You know, and, and that's the way they, they are over there, you know. But I think the guys are right. You've just got to snuff that noise out. And, and to do that, you've got to score, you know. And, and then you build on that and take take it forward but uh, they're experienced enough but well, no, not a big worry that but, but I mean I know they scored three goals and they were offside and they missed a penalty they'll be saying to themselves look we can score goals against this team you know but for me it's, it's what Rangers do at the end of the day you know one one goal for me just kills them they were thing. horrendous at set place yeah, yeah. you know Sono Mark and allowing you know Balligan and the goals are going to, to go and have a run you know, the favourites all day and it, like I say unless they change that Rangers will cause problems, especially at set plays. So it's um, no, it's a great atmosphere. We said said before the tie was done, it was a great opportunity for Rangers to to probably qualify from what they had against Slavia Prague and Leverkusen was it last previous two years. So to get Red Star, they they would have fancied themselves. They've got themselves in a good position, but you know, it'd be a disaster if they threw it away. I, I don't see them doing that. Yeah. Arriba will be back. Lundstrom looked like they'll be back as well. So Ryan Jackson, good form. And you know, I'd see Rangers going there and getting a good result. Yeah, uh, thanks to Nicky Twig who says, Afternoon, guys, good to see Charlie back here with us. Um, never mind Cheltenham, I'll tape that. You're far better, and I think that's fair, Ruffy. Somebody's got their priorities right. Nicky's a regular, watches the show. Lots of people um, uh, are looking at the, the, the score that could possibly happen. Um, and James Wright says, Red Star Belgrade 4, Rangers nil. <laughs> So, fans. yeah, I was just about to say. So, there's one again. Johnny says Rangers will draw 1 1. Stephen McNeil says 4 4 0 Red Star. Um, uh, listen, the joy of it all is uh, we like a bit of banter on the, the score as far as this one is concerned. Dejan Stankovic has, obviously, and rightly so, he wants to rally the troops and the fans as well. He reckons that his players uh, are twice as good at home uh, in the Maracanã as it's called and the fight back is not impossible in his mind. He's got to say that, Ruffy, hasn't he? Yeah, he has, and, and as we all know in football, uh, everything's possible. You know, as Tam's saying, if you get an early goal, the whole fan's behind you, you you're then you know you've got a three-goal lead, well, 3-1 three, it would be, and then you go, you have a dilemma, you know, what do we do? Do we, we try and make sure they don't get a second one? Because if they did get a second one, then you would start worrying. But I, I think Rangers have got goals in them. So yeah. I still think they'll... they'll, they'll the unfortunate thing for Rangers is there's no away goals, though. Yeah. Which kind of... You know, if Rangers went over there and they're away to goals, though, one goal would have made them having to score, what, five? Yeah. Through. So that's... 
<clears throat> has killed him a little bit in this I time. I prefer the, the no, I, I prefer it as well. Killed. Yeah, I prefer it as well. It's, it makes I think it makes it a better game. Yeah. The only one thing I would say, and I'm, I don't want to jump ahead, but I really hope sometime in the future, you know, whether I am here to witness it or not, Ruffy, I really hope that they stop the clock and embrace what rugby does. When the ball is not in play, stop the clock. And I just refer to the nonsense. Peter will be here all day in Scottish football. Well, can I tell you something? Atletico Madrid last night, I mean, Man United are rubbish anyway, but but um, <laughs> Atletico Madrid are a disgrace. Yeah. It's, well, it, you know, but everybody can is, imagine? you know, they're, they're going down, they're wasting time, subs are coming on. You're lucky if you get, I think they worked it out, something like 54 minutes of play mm -hmm. from players actually playing in a game. Stop the clock. And, and, and give people a chance to stop these guys that cheat. That's all they do. Just cheat the game. No, we don't cheat the game. Play the game right. That's that's it. They're away from home in the Champions League at Man United. No, one, I get one that. The best it's so, the rules, you, but so you've got to use that to your advantage. Absolutely, but block that rule off. No, no chance. No, you're not no, having no, game management. No, game management. Somebody fouls you, go down. Take it, buy a film. No, I get Take that. Time. I'm buying into that, but I don't think it's... I, 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 I think it's a, a real source of... Frustration, anxiety for people, the fans who pay their money who think they're being cheated by it, Ruffy. Yeah, I, I agree with you in the principle of what you're saying for the fans and that, but if we're all, if Charlie's playing and, and my team, I'm watching my team and it's, we're winning one nothing with 10 minutes to go, I want us to see you at the game. I've got, I, you listen, know, you don't I want need to, to explain say, professionalism yeah, to you, I'm just saying so, stop it. <laughs> yeah. Just take it out of their hands. Take it yeah. out of their hands. Well, I, I, I watch the rugby and I, I don't have a problem with it. And the, the players on the park don't have a problem. They know the circumstances. If the, uh, the, the, the other, uh, to move that on, I would, I would say uh, an, an attack. If somebody is that badly injured, they have to go off and get treatment at the side of the park. I would, the player that injures them should be going off as well. Till he comes back on again. There you are. Another rule. Okay. Oh yeah. Um, what do you make of that? What do you make of that? Well, it's, it's, a great, oh, wait, it's a great football oh. topic, isn't it? Oh. Man, listen, just give. All right, because I tackled you and you're going off, so I need to go off and off. Tell him to play ten minutes. I don't know if you get a yellow card in the tackle. If you get a yellow card in the tackle and you injure the boys on the ground, I don't even know what the rules are. I just try and get on with it. Like the so, rule is that you get situation. Aye. Well, why should you get? Why should that team get an advantage? When the guy's off the park for five minutes getting treatment. Because you're getting advantage over your mate, over your, the opposite team. Yeah, but you, you've got, you, one yeah. of your lads is cemented to the, the other opposition. Yeah, you've got to take advantage of it. Yeah, but if you, if you if you injure the boy and he goes off and you get a that's, yellow card, tough luck. you're still on the park. He's yeah. no. That's the way it is. Yeah. Well, listen, you're peeved. You're peeved at that. I'm peeved about two seconds ago and I'm arguing with him over the fact that players just cheat. They kid on, they're injured. You know, it's as simple as that. They kid on their injured. And I, and I have no problem with Charlie's explanation of, well, the professionalism is, the game is about getting an advantage over your opponent. I absolutely get that. But it's from my point of view, it's an entertainment. And I think they've been denied at times <coughs> the chance to see a team come back in a game and make a go of it. I get, let's roll about. I get, let's make five subs. <coughs> I absolutely get, let's kid on. I've really hurt my leg when I haven't. Mm -hmm. You know, Ronaldo runs into a keeper, and the, uh, honestly, I thought he'd been shot from the stands. But I get what Charlie's saying. So what Charlie, do you say about Rick, that the managers throwing their arms around trying to get pe people booked and all that all the time? Like, um, uh, what's his name? Simeone. Simeone. Yeah. Chomping a bit like a lunatic. Yeah. Trying Can to I just say something? Him? I don't even. I, I don't know about you, but I don't even like footballers. No, uh, I think coming it, to the rep and giving it all that, you know, no, get him no, booked. Wrong. If you do that, you should wrong. get an automatic yellow card. Yes, it, what, yourself. If you, if you show this, if, yeah, you, if show you do that, that see the referee, yeah. well, you're getting booked. Oh, like many times I've said, ref, that's a yellow card when it's a foul. You, yeah, but I would never ever say, show the face like that. I'd never uh, say that. Like, yeah. It's, it's, it's a, a, culture thing, a culture thing in a foreign country, but... Yeah. You know, but the one that bugs you isn't it? the goalkeeper moving it from one side to the other. Oh, honestly, I, I mean, well, just stop that rule. I think what should be happening there with goalkeepers is if that is a situation where they move it from one end of the six yard area to the other, mm -hmm. then a top flight cricketer should come on and just <laughs> belt them over the that back of their legs. <laughs> <laughs> that happened to me up. That happened to me up at. Uh, to me up at your place at Dundee. What a top flight cricketer oh, no, come no, on no, and built no. it. You. Partly that's what we're playing Dundee, and, and uh, it was windy. And every time I put the ball down on the six yard line, the wind blew it. So I went forward and I got it and I brought it back. And then I go to kick it again, and the wind would blow it, and I go and get it. Three times it happened, and Bob Valentine came running up, yellow card. I says. What are you giving me a yellow card for? He says, you're time wasting. I says, we're getting beat 3 nothing, and there's five minutes to go. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, Charlie, what do you make of this? Potentially um, a, a starting eleven for Rangers. I mean, I'm sure it's open to debate. It's it's just a, a, a throwaway at the moment. Will, will it be those three at the back? I don't think they'll play three. I think they'll play the four. And then at times you'll see if there is a wee bit of pressure from Red Star, Lundstrom will drop in there. But I, I think I believe they'll start with the four at the back. Tavernier, Golson, Balligan and Bassey. Yeah. Um, Lundstrom and Jack and, and Camaro play in the front of them. And the off the right, Kent and Morelos. Um, yeah, no Bassey. No, so Barris, Bassey in the left back, sorry. Yeah. Um, Balligan, Lundstrom and Golson, Tavernier. So, yeah, four, I think 4-2-3, four, three, four, three, one maybe. Yeah. Um, but... If not, it'll be four. But that 11 anyway. Yeah, that, that's the 11 I would, I would expect Rangers to play tomorrow night. Yeah, Tam? And depends, yeah. sorry, but Kent, he went off late in the game against us at the weekend, so, and he had a nasty um, one on his leg, so he might be there, but I'd expect to go in and um, Lundstrom to come back in. Yeah, OK. Um, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what's really <coughs> good about the, the, the game itself. Uh, do you think Rangers will win? Yeah? Yeah, I think they can win the game. Yeah, I know you uh, think they can win it. Do you think? What's your I, I'll go for 2-1 to Rangers. 2-1 to Rangers, I'll go that. I'll go 1 each. 1 each and you? 2-1. Two, 2-1 one. Two, one Rangers, OK. Um, it's all about opinions. Um, I have to tell you, somebody's just sent me a couple of things that I, I want to get your thoughts on. I'm going to get your thoughts on the top scorer as well, but um, there is actually somebody on, on, on the feed. <laughs> you know how the YouTube, you can just put any name you want at the moment until the legislation comes in, Tam. But there's one here, it's Tam McManus's hairy ankles. I mean, honestly, talk about coming talk about coming up with names. I've, I've killed them with wearing socks today, didn't I? Yeah, absolutely, you've done Sorry. it. Yeah. Do you have hairy ankles? <laughs> I don't no. know. Yeah, it's just because sure I, I know some people actually look and uh, and see, mm, no, you're all right. Shaves them. Uh, here's a little bit of news. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'll bet. I wouldn't rule that out, Ruffy. Um, what about the Europa League top goal scorers? Um, I did mention when we were previewing this, uh, Ruffy, I'm under a fair bit of pressure here because one of our journalists, Craig, um, who um, obviously um, likes Rangers, um, he's, he's a, <laughs> am I allowed to say that? Do you think Absolutely. He's a Ranger. I can't believe he's worked with this company. Well, he, Unbelievable. He's, he's a Rangers fan and he's a good lad. Um, not that that's a kind of a, it's amazing he's a Rangers fan and he's a good lad, um, but he's, he's basically, he's, get, me, get, get, get me out of here, Ruffy. That would be the wrong Yeah, man. absolutely. But he said to me, listen, have a look at the goal scorers. And he said to me, listen, Pedro, if this changes and Alfredo Morelos overtakes Henrik Larsson, it's time to get the Larsson strips down and make it an Alfredo Morelos room. And I think it's a great point by Craig. Oh, it's a phenomenal record. You know, I know he scored a lot of goals and you know, obviously took, went over Koisty's record at, at Rangers, but to give him eight off Larson is, is phenomenal. Um, I mean, look at some of the players that he's above as well. You know, Falcao is obviously a Obviously, he's been talking, he's changed agents. There might be something happening in the summer, you never know, do you? Yeah. Oh. Well, the other thing about it we've missed over the last week or two, Ruffy, is uh, Charlie's transfer mind because he sets the transfer value yes. in Scotland of players. Um, you know, from time to time, and I know a lot of people hang on his every word. Um, you know, Dembele, um, Dud, five million, going down to two at one point. Edward, <laughs> Edward, Edward, five million. Edward, Edward. Been yeah, yep. No, he's, he's off. Has he scored. I think he yeah, might he be. I'm not seven or eight. Yeah, not great. What about the Premiership? All right, all right, come down. Yeah. What about uh, what, what about Morelos? Uh, nah, I, I think he's I think he's looking sharp. I think he's thin, I, lean. I do I do think he had that wee sticky spell um, at the mm. end of Stephen's reign, um, and the new management coming in looked to have given him a wee bit of a hunger. You know, again, he's, he's he seems to be at it, and you know he's so robust. He, uh, speaking to to people in the, the club the other day. They, he trains every day. He, he wants to play every game, and and they took him off on on Sunday for a rest. You know, forty five minutes done his done his job and come off. And let's say he'll be looking at that record, thinking I can get there. Yeah. But um, Rangers just need to try and you know keep him fit and available for now to end the season because he's going to be a big player for them. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, something's just come in, which is a little bit of uh, news as well that we're going to talk about in a couple of seconds, Ruffy. West Ham against Seville is going to be a great match too. Really looking forward to that because West Ham um, have a chance to match what Rangers can do and get into the next yeah. round if they can see off Seville. But I think this one 
is yeah. on a knife edge. Oh, Seville have got a track record in this competition, you know, winning it and, and getting to the final stages year in, year out, you know, so it's going to be another tight one, you know, I hope it's not the same as the Man United one last night, I hope they can, West Ham can get a goal, because it'd be great to see David Moyes, you know, just continuing in this tournament, you know, for what he's been through in his career. Yeah, absolutely, we'll talk about that a wee bit later on, but nevertheless, um, for West Ham, if they could get past Seville, they've got such a great record, Seville, well, you would, you, they're the type of side that easily could score in London. Yeah, I think that'll be a very good game actually. I don't know if that's would that possibly be the early kickoff no, or later. Late one, Rangers the early. Rangers early, so we can watch this both of them. That's brilliant. No, it'll be a good game that. I think the, if West Ham can get through that tie, then they've got every chance to go and win the tournament. Because for me, Seville are favourites to win it. Yeah, uh, West Ham. Do you fancy them? Yeah, I do because they created. I think it was three big chances over in Seville. For now, should have scored. Um, yeah, should have never. But no, I think. Uh, West Ham have definitely got a, an opportunity to get into the next round of this. Yeah, OK. Um, here's uh, the news that's just come in. Hibs against Hearts is Saturday the 16th of uh, April and that is going to be a 12.15 kick-off. So that's on the Saturday. Rangers against Celtic is on the Sunday and that's a 2pm kick-off on Sunday the 17th. Is that a... Is that a safe enough time on the Sunday? Uh, no, I think the Hibs and Hearts supporters. It's a lot of drinking time, though. Yeah, I think the Hibs That's and Hearts worry. <laughs> supporters will have a wee moan about it. be disappointed in A wee that bit moan about it being sadly. Which yeah. one yeah, are you Hibs talking about? Hibs the Hibs, Hibs Hearts are. Hearts. I, I, I think, think they'll be moaning about it. Tra Travelling through, but people will say, look, make a day. At but also, yeah, it is on a Saturday, so it's the, the, the trains and that will be better on a Saturday than they will be on a Sunday. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sunday service. So, uh, no, nah, listen. Listen, they're there in the semi-final. What an opportunity to get to a final at the end of May. Two full houses. Yeah. Hopefully Hibs and Hearts sell them oh, both houses, you would think. Yeah, so, yeah, absolutely. I, I can see a massive crowd coming through yeah. for it. Yeah. it? And, uh, and again, you know, it's a set, uh, there's some times I think we go through the old Groundhog Day where people go, the timing is a disgrace, it's not fair to fans, we should have it at Murrayfield, all this mm. uh, malarkey. But there's no point in talking about these things now. It's all dead and buried. As Ruffy said, they get through there early, they enjoy the day and... Um, one of them is going to go home on that train. Uh, I mean, what's it like? I mean, you know yourself. What's it like just if you're a loser on the bus? Oh, horrendous. I can remember we played Livingston in the League Cup final in uh, 2003 and we had 40,000 Hibs fans there and Livingston had about 6,000 and we were massive favourites and we lost 2-0. Do you think they had as many as 6,000? Probably not even that. Not even that. Hibs had 40,000 fans there. You know, that shows you how, how you know, we hadn't won a cup in a, in a long time. We remembered a function back at Easter Road after it. <laughs> And we drove back from Hamden back to Easter Road, and we could see all the you know, bus after bus of Hib supporters, and just think we could be back in open top bus if we won the tournament and all that, and horrible. So yeah. that that is going to be a long journey back for one of the teams. Uh, obviously, Hearts beat Hibs a couple of seasons ago on uh, an extra time, I think it was. And <coughs> listen, Hibs are due Hearts at, at, at Hamden. Hopefully, it's this season. Yeah, uh, Ruffy, you know what it's like. You, mm -hmm. you know that. Yeah. That long, painful drive home, you, have to, you can't go out, well, an no, hour, don't an hour. Go out, no. that long hour, you it's know, hard, isn't no, it? No, it's, it's not like it's going it, back up to Inverness. It's the train one, you know, the train one, the lobby, if you're, if you're in, you, if you're a hip supporter, <laughs> you're in the first, uh, Carriage. you know, the hey, first hey, calm your train station, haven't lost yet. And, then, and then you're picking up at Haymarket or whatever, you just get a first class ticket. Do you? Aye. Yeah. <laughs> just to There's avoid not it. a lot of them will be in the first class. Will <laughs> <laughs> you are a moron. Um, I think there'll be more than a few who would get into that first class. Um, but nevertheless, it's painful. Um, is there anyone that you can remember from your time, Charlie? You just thought, oh, I just want to lock myself away in a darkened room. Um, relegation, yeah, Stoke. Yeah. Uh, when, when I missed the penalty against Brighton, um, Oof. it was probably the one that sealed it for us. Yeah, that was that was a tough time, but no, nah, it's it, it is tough, especially cup finals. No. Here's a great question for you. Yeah. Give me the top three penalty takers in Europe, because he's up there, isn't he? Tavernier. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Tavernier. Um, Jorginho. Yeah, Chelsea boy. Yeah. And it's difficult to tell, but the boy Ivan Tony is good at the penalties as well. Yeah, doesn't miss. Tony, yeah, he doesn't miss. Cast, he's doesn't miss. He's, very, yeah. he's excellent. I mean, when you go back through the, the years, Robbie, the bit, one of the best penalty takers I've ever come across was Matt Latissi. I think he had four, 49 out of 50. Mark Crossley saved Nottingham Forest <coughs> one night. Mm. But other than that, he was sensational at them. But Tavernier's 
Tavernier's not hitting them mid, he's hitting them postage stamp. Yeah, it was great. The one against um, Red Star, I'm not sure he meant to put it that far. He slipped a wee bit, he slipped a wee bit and yeah. he opened his, opened his foot up, but his record is, is phenomenal. But even when he missed, he wanted to go again, and that's mm. that's a sign of being able to, you know, good character and you know using it. But no, he's he is up there with, with what's going on. But I think Ivan Tony's a surprise. The one he he's got uh-huh. incredible. Raymond Stewart, Raymond Stewart was a brilliant penalty taker, and another man I, I, I must mention is Phil Neal, who was a great penalty yeah, right. taker for Liverpool. But uh, yeah, uh, these are the guys that you actually you yeah. think. The only thing with him is you've got to watch you don't use his soap in the bath. Yeah, I remember that story. That was such a good story <laughs> from Frank McGarvey. <laughs> Never forget that. Uh, thanks to Johnny who says, Ruffy doesn't know what it's like to win an Edinburgh derby, no. which is why, Johnny, I decided I to played, ask him. He's the best place I, guy. I played an Edinburgh derby at, at Easter Road and it was nothing each way a minute ago and we Robbo scored in the last minute. And when we came off into the dressing room, I just grabbed all my gear. And I shut that and went into the car park just drove him. Wow, that huffy. No, it was a nightmare. Gutted. And I've left, left my shoes as well. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't go back. <laughs> was, it your, was it your fault, the goal? Not at all, no, it was a good goal for wee Robo. Yeah, four yards out? Yeah, usual. <laughs> there's, nothing, there's nothing better than scoring the last minute. Oh. I, remember, I remember Gary, we were doing to 10 men. Grant Bedner got sent off and we hung in and hung in at home. And Gary O'Connor went through and scored in the last minute for us to win at Easter Road. In an Edinburgh Derby? In an Edinburgh Derby, oh. and it was the best feeling ever. Then other, I can remember there was Phil Stamp scored at Easter Road in the last minute he beat us. Just there's nothing that's a relation of football, and it's a chance to be a hero for one, one person. I was there when, when Paul Hartley scored the hat trick against Hibs in the semi final. Yeah. I think he scored two free kicks. Well, one, of it is, one of his free kicks. Aye. Catching um, the goalkeeper out. So, aye, that's right. Really? So, listen, two great games. Yeah, I for Scottish football. Didn't know you'd miss one, Charlie, and in such a big game, it's completely slipped my memory. Missed them in a couple. Yeah. Darling Cup final, missed a horrendous one. Yeah. But kept us taking over that one for the last cut Carling Cup final. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, the Australian Super Cup, uh, there's been details released on this. Um, it, the tickets are going to go on sale on Friday, Ruffy, uh, for this Australian Super Cup at, uh, I think, 3pm. <coughs> 3 3am in the morning. So they're going to sell then. You have to get up at three a.m. in the morning if you want to get the tickets um, for for the event, and then obviously you've got to you, you, once you buy them, that's you. You've got to get the flights. You've got to head off. So you getting them? I, I think, think uh, oh, we'll go for press passes. I don't yeah. know if we'll get the full I four, th- but I think there'll be more than people for for Sydney, Sydney going to that game. I think there'll be people travelling for everywhere. Oh, well, there'll, 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 there'll be that. people from Glasgow going to that game. Oh yes. There's all the kids on super about. fans on both sides. Oh, yes. they'll be travelling from Glasgow to go there. Yeah, I you know the know? Rangers have already had contact with people that are desperate to go to the game. So yeah, well, they're playing um, on the November seventeenth. That's a Thursday against Sydney FC at the Sydney Football Stadium, and then Rangers on the Sunday at the Accor Stadium, which holds. 83,500. Now, I have to say to you, Ruffy, 83,500 is a good, big stadium where a lot of... I don't think too many people will be disappointed. No, I don't think so either. I think it'd be be super. I know sets of fans are are only happy about it, but you've got to put that aside and and, and let the people who haven't seen their, their, their clubs playing, you know, the chance to bring their kids along to see whether it's Rangers or Celtic, because... I mean, they'll not get a chance again, you know, because I don't think it will happen that often. Yeah, I have to say, um, if we've got uh, Tam McManus's hairy ankles, we've got Hugh McDonald's glass eye is another is another name of somebody on our YouTube feed, and he <laughs> says, uh, Peter, I've already ordered hospitality tickets for this match in November. Now that's what I call forward thinking on a game like that, Tam. I mean, that's magnificent, isn't it? It's becoming Some the summer, summer as well going in there, is it? Oh, but oh, yeah. oh, beautiful. Plus, we've got accommodation already. The amount of people in Australia who are watching the program. Who've offered us meals? Mm-hmm. We party. Can we do a week there? Yes, we can. Because there's a there's a break in the league, eh? so mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. So we've got an opportunity. We there, could we? we could do a week there. You've got another you've got another if you yeah, got another year yeah. left. Oh, well, I've not signed yet, but yeah, okay. So but there's there's going to be a break. There'll be a world, break. Aye, yeah. So so that be. So we're actually going to Australia and then just jumping up to Qatar. Nah, nah, nah. nah straight yeah. Here's a question: Will there be segregation for the match? Yes. I don't. I, have to be. I think there will be. Do you be. think so? Yeah, yes. it'd have yeah. to be. Yeah, it'd have to be. There's got to be some. There'll be a family section. 
Yeah, I think they've got to control. Yeah. I think they've got to be sensible if they know. I know it's Rangers and Celtic. Okay, alcohol and sell as well. Yeah, yeah. let's. Well, the idiots are letting themselves. have to make down. sure it's trouble free. They really do have to make sure that everything goes smoothly. So I'm sure we don't need to tell them what they have to do. I think, no. I think they're, they know themselves. Yeah. Listen, the, the news as ever is always moving quickly on this programme uh, and Hibs have released a statement saying after receiving the information from the SFA uh, there were a number of long and strong conversations regarding the price and expense to our supporters. We explained this in detail to the SFA, however, they have not moved on their decision which is incredibly disappointing and has caused us great frustration. Despite these prices, we hope to see as many Hibbies as possible at Hamden in what will be a brilliant occasion for all involved uh, that's from Hibs the tickets are £35 each um, it's a lot of money it's a lot of money so particularly when you're coming through Fairman you've got to get a train through you know, you've yeah. got a family there really really expensive and Hibs have been very proactive on stuff like this you know they're trying to, to look after their supporters you know it was a five and again a couple of weeks ago at St Johnston the full house so I'm sure that Ben Kensel and the board at Hibs have been desperate to get that down to maybe £20 or so, £25. So, so why don't the club subsidise it and make it 25 quid? and the club sub subsidise the other £10? Well, I, think it's I know, it's, I know if, if, they, if they're willing to do it, you know, they say that, why don't they try and help the supporters because they back the club all season? I don't know, I'm just trying to say, do they want to give back for what maybe the money they get from TV rights or...? I think I think it's a great point. I think Hibs have really pushed the boat out with the fiver. Mm -hmm. I think they tried that to say thank you. I know Greg McEwen is the commercial director there, um, obviously wanted to, to be really proactive and positive to offer the, the Hibs fans something <coughs> to, and the season ticket holders to say, look, thank you, as Motherwell and many other clubs yeah. have done to say thank you. Some haven't, um, but nevertheless, um, I, I I wonder, Ruffy, it's, it's a tough call because money's tight. And can I just say something to you, which are off the back of this, which I know a lot of people will will think, oh my God, you've you've really uh, put together a tenuous link on this. But petrol prices are astronomical, mm -hmm. and you have a situation that by the time this game kicks in in mid-April, we will then be subject to the change in the heating as well, mm -hmm. and people are getting another. Uh, you know, boot where the, the sun don't shine, and then suddenly you're asking fans. It's a lot of, a lot of financial money. pain, Ruffy. It is, you know that. Uh, but I'm sure the clubs will think of something to reward the fans who are going. Maybe lay on transport or something like that. Buses, you know. Good shout. Good uh, shout. I think if they if they do free something, buses or something like that, I, I would think buses. most clubs would, yeah. would do that. Yeah, yeah. And, and and make it a wee bit easier for the people who find the 35 quid too much yeah um, could be something like that Tom I mean it's, it's asking a lot I hope so as I said you want, you want a full house here it's a big game it's a semi-final and there might be people who are desperate to go just can't afford to go mm -hmm. you know and if, if even if the clubs as you said Hibs and Hearts to get together and you know bus companies whatever train tickets just try and help somehow you know financially to get as many people as possible through to Hamden yeah okay um Thanks very much for uh, so many of you uh, actually just posting messages with regards to this. It's a lot to ask fans, uh, I have to say. So uh, my sympathy with Hibs, what they do, if they're able to even offer anything, we don't know. But they certainly pulled out all the stops to try and help. Uh, Charlie, it's the first time I've had a chance to chat to you. I was up there on Wednesday for the St Mirren game. Oh yeah. boy, was that painful. Um, it's... It's hard at the moment then, I, I look, no wins in six games and you've got Rangers Aberdeen at home and then you've got Dundee United away, yeah. it's what a running you've got before the split. That's tough, but that's football, um, you know we have to, there's only us that can change it in the dressing room, inside the club, the, the group of players can only change it, you know it doesn't matter, you know you can't bring anybody else in, you can't buy anybody, so we sit, you know as a group of players we have to take responsibility in where we are, we've got eight games now to to be able to be in that playoff game. And that's where we look. We look to get above St Johnston. Um, that's the next step. At Rangers, you're hoping that they might come and have an off day. They never on Sunday in the Cup. Um, after this European game, travelling back, it might take a wee bit out of them and you might catch them cold. Um, but then you have Aberdeen at home and Dundee United. It's two huge games. And, um, you know, you can only focus on them when they come round. But, we are where we are, um, we've conceded far too many goals, we've not scored enough goals um, and let's like, say you were there the other night, I, w I, was, I, I thought we were going to just take a point and, and you know get to 24 points, get as level with St Johnson and give it a good uh, ding-dong battle but um, you know, we conceded a goal in the last 30 seconds of the game 
and it's probably got its cost us so far. But um, no, we have to, to get a reaction from Sunday. Huge game at Rangers, they'll bring another big crowd. And if we can you know, get a result from that and take confidence um, into the Aberdeen game after the, the international break. Yeah, Lee Ashcroft out is a Huge blow. Ball. Massive for you. Massive, yeah. Um, it's the hamstring that he he injured um, earlier in the season. He was out for 12 weeks, so we'll wait and see how he is in the next you know, couple of days. And, and um, no, he is a huge blow for us because he's, he's a threat at set plays and you know he's, um, he's one that will go and put his body in the line. And unfortunately for us, he tried to, to put his body in the line and it's, and it's backfired a little bit. Um, so hopefully the news is, is better than what it is um, because, let's say, he's a, big, he's a key player for us going forward. Yeah, I, I know you've had a hamstring problem. Are you likely to be able to make a contribution before the end of the season to help with Dundee? I will be back before the end of the season. Um, before Sunday, no. Um, after the, the international break, yes. So, um, But I'm in the same boat as well. I need to get fit to help this team. Um, and I take that pressure on my shoulders because, you know, if I'm in, in that team, we're a better team. So we have to, I have to now try and help the lads around me. I've got experience of being in a relegation battle. And I have to use that and get fit. Um, from now to the end of the season, and it's eight cup finals, and um, you know, I feel as if I'm on the pitch, then then we've got a, a good chance of winning games as well. Yeah, yeah. Tell me what you have been saying to the players, because you've been through it before. What do you need? What is, <laughs> what are the do the players need to show that you've learned from previous experiences? Character. You can't you can't hide in this situation. You can't you you, you can't mope around. You can't assault. You need to go and train well and, and be prepared and be ready. Because if you don't, it'll affect the group. Um, you know, if people are coming down with the shoulders done instead of walking in with a smile on their face, yeah, we're in a bad position. But if you have a good environment and, and people are coming in and enjoying their work and working hard, then then it definitely gives you a better opportunity the weekend. So the lads have just got to do that for now to to the end of the season and um, I, I believe that we are good enough to stay up um, but our next target will be getting above St Johnston and um, and if we do that and we get into the playoff then we'll we'll, we'll see where it takes us um, and, and whatever happens in the championship. And if you're not on the park are you at this moment trying to rally the troops and help Mark McGee off the park? I need to be you know I'm you know this most senior player in the group um, and I've got to be there for the lads and helping them and, and encouraging them because it is it is difficult, um, you know, when you lose a late goal, and then let's say when you're playing against the quality Rangers, and and and, and you know the, the goals that they scored, it, you know, penalty and, and and a set play. But no, I have to to keep the lads going and 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 be ready to to encourage and um, and let's say get myself fit as well because I believe that um, if I'm available and fit, then it will give us a better chance to stay up too. Yeah, um, a couple of bits of news. I think you know we're talking about injuries and key players that are lost to uh, teams like Dundee. Uh, we talked about those semi-finals. I think uh, Robbie Nielsen is hoping that Cammy Devlin and John Souter are back for the uh, double header on 9th of April against against Hibs. Yeah, listen, some big games coming up for for Hearts and Hibs. There's going to be there's definitely going to be a double header, and depending if Hibs get into the top six, it could be a triple header. Mm. You know, depending on that when that game is. So there's some big games coming up. Hearts have obviously a lot of injuries. I think they've got third place tied up, and they'll be looking to try and win the Scottish Cup this season. And it'll be a great season for Hearts, but he'll be looking to particularly. I think John Souter. I think he's a big player for them. Cammy Devlin's been good in the middle of the pitch as well, so they'll be looking to try and get as strong as possible going into those games against Hibs. i tell you the one thing, Ruffy, that I'm noticing as we head towards the summer, the schedule is completely <laughs> and utterly mental. I wouldn't like to be Steve Clark um, because they're facing a six-game nightmare um, with the playoff uh, coming as well. Let's not forget he's got four Nations League mm -hmm. games. Yeah, the, you'll have to monitor the players, you know, the, the ones that are going the whole, the whole road, the ones that are getting to semi-finals and finals, as well as the, the league games as well and uh, but I think once they all meet up and they, they can see who's still got the petrol in the tank you know and, and Callum McGregor is a perfect example last year the, the way he was still in there at the end and the, a lot of the energy levels are good just now but it's the injuries and everything you can pick up. Yeah, here's a strange one and, and again I've had a number of people asking me and talking about it, um, international duty players will make themselves available, they're facing obviously hectic time and the clubs will be looking at the summer and thinking my god this is this is constant now, it's like 24-7 for players all year round. Um, you know, when you've got a situation like for example the, the Old Firm games coming up, there's the Celtic duo uh, Hatati and Maida, 
have been uh, selected for Japan, there's a very little short period of time where they go on international duty and then have to get ready for the next game. Yeah, I think they, they, they boys have been hackered. I think they've, they've been playing, you know, obviously come from Japanese league to, to Scottish football. They need, desperately need a break. I think that both of them are doing okay. Hatati came in and looked magnificent the first few games. He's definitely dipped. Yeah. And I just think it's because so many games at the minute, you know, he's probably tired. He's got to travel to the other side of the world, you know, to go and play for Japan then back again. So... I think they'll be desperate to get a rest into the, into the Japanese players. Kyogo obviously still injured. He's not involved. So it'll be interesting to see if Kyogo's even there. At the, we'll, we'll play this season. You know, yeah. We spoke about it three or four weeks ago. I'd heard that he was out for the season. and It's definitely looking that way. Even if he, even if he comes back, he's not going to be 100% fit. Well, you have to ask yourself then, Charlie, if he played in that game at Hamden and he wasn't 100%, I mean, he scored a brilliant goal, but it must be one heck of a tear on his hamstring or, or something else that we yeah, don't yeah. know about yeah, it's well, absolutely done him in well yeah no it, it, I think reports it was the same as Ashcroft so he was out 12 weeks with surgery so unless we don't know if he's had surgery on the hamstring yeah. um, or, or there's a different way or maybe he's had a little setback um, but I thought I heard Ange talk about he'd played in a game the other day with um, I think that would be in every back page Charlie I yeah, don't I no, so can't, he's not then he's kept but, himself clo- he's kept his cards close to his chest on it he yeah. says he doesn't want to discuss people's private medical um, health on this but yeah. I just don't get that from him because quite simply the whole game thrives on updates for the fans it is yeah. an entertainment yeah. after all you're not you're not exactly you know going against any kind of a uh, privacy with regards to an injury for somebody who plays in a team sport yeah but yeah well obviously listen he's always got the problem and, and get back but what he'd done from from the start of the season to to when he got the the injury was was incredible um and he took the risk for the cup final and it worked for him because they won the game but unfortunately for him it's this long-term hamstring injuries he's out for he's been out for a while so they'll be ready to get him back and, and they'll be looking forward to getting back if they can not being able to fly to to Japan would help him as well, but yeah. um, definitely for his recovery, he'll be he'll be back soon. I think he'll be back before the end of the season, um, and they're just picking the right moment for it to come. Yeah, tell other man, it could be back um, in Scottish football. Owen Coyle, red hot favourite for Queens Park as the manager. Yeah, well, he's done his shift over there. Him and Sandy Stewart, you know, the, the, the was it the league and the cup they won? Yeah, Jam Shapur, yeah, the, 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 the team it, that he's led to the title. And he's enjoyed it, and, and we keep hearing about Queens Park. You know, the people behind the scenes and Leanne Dempster going there, and you know, the new stadium getting up, and uh, everything seems to be the kind of thing that he might want to get involved in. You know, and uh, if he was to go there, you know, I, I'm sure he. he prefer to be home he's been away for a long long time traveling yeah. about uh, and we'll just have to wait and see in that one yeah I mean uh, obviously when the story breaks they've, they've listed all the clubs that Oni used to play for you know St Johnston Burnley Bolton Wigan Blackburn Houston Dynamo and Ross County um, obviously I haven't mentioned Kilnocky he played for them <laughs> he played for, not played for them in a cup final no he's, 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 he's vastly experienced he never had a great spell at Ross County to be honest they were, they were very very poor and yeah. I, I don't think he'd I don't think he'd have seen him back in Scottish football, you know, but he's coming back in a really ambitious Queen's Park, you know, going to go full time, I think. So, yeah. listen, they are, that'd be a good they job are, for him. They are full time, Yeah, yeah, it's, they are full time. It, it, it's, it's, for me, it's the best, one of the best, it's probably the best job you can get at the moment in, Outside in, the, top in, league. in the top league. Yeah. They're ambitious, they want to build. Leanne's obviously got a bit of money to spend. Um, they've got their own sporting director coming in. But it's a left field appointing on Goyle. It's come from nowhere. You know, you'd yeah. expect they might have went for a, a younger. You know, coach, but you know he's always done a great job over in India. Um, he's coming back, getting the opportunity, and um, we'll see Greg Stewart turn up at, at Queens Park next season as well. Yeah, well, <laughs> that's the other that's the other aspect of it. Um, I, I also have to get up as well. Eh? Yeah, uh, but listen, I think that the mere fact that they can sign professionals and they've got a bit of money behind them yeah. now, I think that far outweighs what other clubs have got to spend. The one thing I would say, Ruffy, is uh, Owen Coyle built a good CV up. St Johnston and Burnley, um, uh, you know, and, and and a good period at Bolton, and then suddenly it started to go, you know. There's been a couple of times when managers hit a club where it just doesn't work, mm-hmm. but he's got something. Yeah, uh, then, and I think he's say, an infectious character. Yeah, I like Owen. Yeah, I think so. Uh, I think I, I'm I right in saying I, I remember him scoring a good goal for Bolton against Liverpool at Liverpool. Yeah. Was it a header, wasn't it? That was a great Bolton team. John McGinley was in that team. Yeah, I think Andy Walker was in it too. Andy Walker. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, they're looking at experience. They're looking at somebody who likes the coaching side because I think that'll be part of it as well. They'll probably have an academy there. So, as, as Charlie said, it's a big setup there. I, I've always said on record, I just don't know where they're going to get the support from. Yeah, well, maybe it's uh, maybe once they become the third force, Ruffy, they'll be able to call on uh, the support because apparently they don't have a WhatsApp group, so they'll be quite fresh and you know they'll have a, got a decent, <laughs> and a decent pitch. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, they've a decent got a pitch. decent pitch. Well. Hamden. What about that? Fair pitch, the better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, 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 you're happy. When you were getting the cash in the money, money, you took the dough. You're happy. You're happy to take the greed. You took the dough. Yeah, absolutely. Don't try to help a fellow club out. Ah, yeah, yeah, absolutely. What about talking about helping clubs out? Um, I watched the Champions League last night. I mean, at Man United, uh, I can see the whole thing being replayed out um, as far as Sir Matt Busby left. They just tried manager after manager. They just didn't get it right. There wasn't any long-term thought process. In comes Fergie. They stuck with him. They reaped the rewards. And now, since 2013, it's been just one debacle after another. They're not a, They're not a great side to watch I think they're they're all over the place I don't see any style I don't see any formation I don't and they've got lots of players and one of the chilling facts from the broadcast last night they've spent the most money 1.4 billion is it it's incredible yeah something has to change this you know the structure of the club and uh, they, they have to get that right and but importantly they have to get the manager right you know if they get the manager right then they'll attract the good the right players um but above I think it's it's become a bit of a, a crisis up there in the in the boardroom and things like that. So I don't know don't know what's going on. It's just the performance on the pitch are not what you expect from Man United. And like you say, from 2013, you know, been punting managers left, right, and centre. Ranić is not the answer. He's obviously going to move up to a sporting director's job in the summer or consultancy job in the summer for two years. So it's it's on his head to get this manager right, huh? mm. and it's who's available. You know, if I, I'm not man United. Is a suggestion of Thomas Tuchel? Oh, I would be taking him straight away. I, you, yeah, Chelsea's in a bit of a crisis, you've got to go and take him. If he's available, what he's done at Chelsea is, is phenomenal. What he done at PSG was great as well. So he's the only one, I think, at the moment that that is is, is elite that can get close to Pep and, and, and Jurgen Klopp. Yeah. Um, because I don't I don't see anybody else out there for them. Yeah, it's, uh, that's, the, that's the key to this is trying to get a manager who can revive them and trying to get a manager that this board, who seem clueless at times, can actually just say, look, go and run the club again. G give us the blueprint, Give us what, tell us what we need to do and then move forward with a long-term plan because yeah. there doesn't seem to be one. No, there, isn't, there hasn't been for a number of years at Man United and watching them last night, you, you go back to the Alec Ferguson days, they were dominating Europe, you know, dominating the league, they're miles off it, miles off Man City, Liverpool. So they've got to go and get somebody, as you said, Thomas Tuchel would be a great appointment, but you've got to give them three or four years and go, right, this is your <coughs> three years to build a team, build a style of play, uh, and, and go and take on the big boys because they're so far off the top two, it's incredible at the minute. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and of course, with every game that Ronaldo doesn't score a goal, you know, one minute he's a hero, the next minute he's slaughtered, Ruffy. But I, I saw him walking off the pitch last night and I thought, that could be the last time you see Ronaldo in a red shirt in a Champions League game. In a Champions League game, yeah. Uh, I think, obviously, he's, he was desperate to come over to, to England and test himself again. But again, we don't know what Charlie's touched on it behind the scenes. He'll see what's going on behind the scenes. He'll see where Man United are going to be in the next couple of years. So I think it'll be him that'll be making a decision like, I don't want to be here for the next two years. Maybe a new manager coming in, if he gets on with him, he might hang about. But, I mean, he's done it all anyway, hasn't he? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think he still wants to win one of those uh, Champions League medals again and possibly a Ballon d'Or, but time is running out. Catches up with the best of us. Uh, Atletico did a job in Manchester United last night. They got the goal and then happy to sit in, waste time as well. I don't think Ralph Ranić was happy with the, the manner of the goal. I believe that there was a foul on Anthony Alanga before that, but the linesman and the referee didn't see it that way. And that's uh, why we were 1-0 down at half-time. I think we shouldn't have been 1-0 down at half-time. Uh, we were the better team in the first half. Um, but as I said, uh, it's important to score the first goal yourself against the team, even more so against a team like Atletico. Yeah, couldn't get the goals. Uh, wasted a lot of time, but they got the all-important goal and they're through. Yep, they're through. Uh, you know, I don't think anybody would have 
been surprised with that. I think the first leg they were they were by far the better side, you know, for the first hour of the game. So they go in, Man United I'd said miles off it. But it'd be interesting to see obviously going to the games tonight. a uh, couple of games that are probably a little bit tighter. Yeah, absolutely. Here's the fixtures, here's the results um from the uh, Champions League. United beaten by Atletico. Ajax out late goal from Benfica uh, and they're out as well Juventus Villarreal and Lille against Chelsea um, are the other two matches and uh, you know the Chelsea is a developing story minute by minute on the sanctions and uh, financially what it awaits Chelsea the one thing that at the moment I think you have more than a few interested parties um, hovering about Charlie looking at it the owner of uh, the Chicago Cubs I think it's the Ricketts family are interested they're one of 20 notes of interest should Chelsea be up for sale at two to three billion oh. it's a snip yeah, it's, it's cheap isn't it yeah uh, it's just like going and buying a you know, aftershave it's just simple isn't it? but two to three billion and they're just it's going to be a consortium probably going to come in and, and buy it isn't it you know they're going to chip in together and it's in a mess um, but you know, the quicker the sale is done, the the better for for Chelsea as a, as the fans and the and the the history they've had over the, the last twenty years. You know, moving forward, they'll be looking to get this sale done, and the government will be also wanting to get it done as well. So, whoever comes in will have to have deep pockets because then they'll want to. If you want to buy Chelsea for two or three billion, you've obviously got to come and invest in the players as well. So it'd be interesting to see if whoever comes in will they go and spend the money that they have spent like previously. Who who decides in the preferred bidder? It's the closing end date on Friday. But who decides? The government. So they open the envelope and say, well, it's when that's nice. Well, <laughs> well, they'll be having a party. <laughs> down the street yeah, when they yeah. see the bids coming in. Yeah, and that money gets transferred in. Yeah, enough of the parties. Um, anyway, uh, we're still waiting on that report. Um, the other thing I was going to say to you is there's a small matter of Arsenal against Liverpool, uh, Tam. Tonight. Which is yeah, a big game, game in hand. Uh, big one, I think they will. I think they'll take Arsenal because I think Liverpool are now in the. Is it Anfield? No, no it's, it's, no, it's the Emirates. No, I don't think Liverpool will beat them. No? No, I, I think Arsenal are in fact playing out of their skin at the minute. Really, really impressed with Arsenal. What about Liverpool? Arsenal, Liverpool playing well as well. That's a stonewall draw. Yeah, okay, Ruffy, Liverpool, draw for me, draw, draw, what? Yeah. what? Draw, Have yeah, a draw. look at yourself, by I'm the way. I'm homeless to draw because I want Man City to win the league. Oh, do you? Well, this will reduce it to one, Charlie. Mm. Liverpool will win, reduce it to one, yes. and then it's all roads lead to the Etihad. Uh, it's, it's, listen, Liverpool will win tonight. Too much for Arsenal, and like you say, it'll set up for a cracker at the Etihad, and um, that'll end up, you know, hopefully it's a classic because it's going to, listen, the, the front two are miles ahead of everybody else. So um, if Liverpool can get it done, it'll be, be good to, to have a big title race on. Yeah, absolutely. Roll on. Let's uh, text those two <coughs> once the second one goes in. <laughs> anyway, uh, Gareth Bale and Aaron Ramsey have been called up to the Wales uh, World Cup uh, squad for the playoff semi-final against Austria. So Ramsey, clearly the, the, the manager of Wales, is quite simply saying, well, he's kicked a ball for Rangers, he's in. Mm. I spoke to him after the game. Uh, How do you feel? Sunday, loves it. Yeah. Yeah, really happy. You know, he's just getting finding his feet. He's... Feels fit, just needs games, and um, will he get those games now between now and then? Oh, absolutely, yeah, yeah. Because if, you know, you, you see at times his quality that he has, he will get the game time. Um, yeah. You know, so he's you no, know, he is enjoying it coming up to a big club, and um, you know, just looking forward to the rest of the season and getting you know, get let's say getting the games, and let's say he was looking forward to it, not looking forward to these four or five games in the summer now. It's going to be a tough period for them for Wales but um, no he's enjoying it which is good ok um, tomorrow of course it's uh, all roads lead to Belgrade we'll be looking at that game and um, obviously we think that Rangers can get at minimum a draw uh, I think they can win it Charlie certainly thinks they can win it um, and that would be Rangers into the next stage of the Europa League which would be absolutely fantastic um, we will uh, look ahead to that we'll obviously discuss some of the other stories as well big weekend for us coming up Ruffy obviously just uh, you know, staff party, Christmas party. It's, it's taken a while, hasn't it? Yeah, I've still got my presents from Christmas. It never happened, so I'm bringing them along. And well, that's fantastic. That's a revelation. What isn't a it? lie! Yeah, honestly, I mean, if you turn <laughs> up with any present whatsoever, I'll be absolutely <laughs> gobsmacked. I bet the chocolates. <laughs> <Good God. laughs> yeah. Well, we'll take the hazelnuts. We're happy with that, time, aren't we? Yes. Are you all set? Will you be wearing your usual ridiculous gear? Are you? Might wear a suit. Might go suited and booted. Was that right? Yeah, I might go and suit and boot on Sunday. Oh, yeah. fantastic. Well, I hope the people of Newcastle like you in a suit. Um, that should throw enough of them off the scent, Ruffy. Uh, thanks to Charlie, and uh, Charlie will be back with us on Friday, uh, ahead of a big weekend of football for 
uh, Dundee. Uh, we'll talk more about that. Tam McManus will be back on the Friday. And of course, uh, Ruffy as well will be with me tomorrow uh, when Tam Cowan will be joining us here uh, to give us his own special brand of humour and of course discuss all the major football topics. Don't forget to subscribe to PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel. And if you get a chance, if you download the PLZ Soccer app, you'll get all uh, the breaking news stories from the UK, Europe and globally as well. And you can watch the show live on your phone every day. So it's well worth downloading the PLZ Soccer app as well. Today, thank you very much to all the guys for the chat and to you for all your chat on our feed as well. We'll see you tomorrow.